Hello everybody and welcome to Dark Souls 2. This game is finally released so we're going to start on it and yes. As you can see I've already started and played a little bit but we're going to start a new character. Perhaps you've seen it. Maybe in a dream. A murky forgotten land. place where souls may mend your ailing mind. You will lose everything once branded. The symbol of the curse. An augur of darkness. Your past, your future, your very light. None will have meaning and you won't even care. By then, you'll be something other than human. A thing that feeds on souls, a hollow. Long ago, in a walled-off land far to the north, a great king built a great kingdom. I believe they called it Drang Lake. Perhaps you're familiar. No, how could you be? But one day, you will stand before its decrepit gate without really knowing why. to a flame. Your wings will burn in anguish. Time after time. For that is your fate. The fate of the cursed. Here we are in game. God, this game is beautiful. It's on Mac settings and it's on PC, so yeah. Damn. 
things betwixt. There we go. I can't be more happy with this game so far. Um, it's absolutely astounding. Now, of course, you don't start in this one. You don't start as a class. You go and you get your class. And then I'm just going to explore around, kind of have a look in case we can find anything extra special. There's a phantom. I love that because it's release date today, there's so many like ghosts and stuff walking around, it makes the game feel so much more lively. So much more fun than like Dark Souls 1 because it just feels so much more alive. It can also scare the living crap out of you if you're someone like me and you get scared quite easy and walk through a corridor and suddenly there's a ghost. Damn, this game's look good looking. Alright, let's explore up here, because I know there is some mobs and stuff over there, in this area. Now, uh, I did attack these mobs before, and it caused me a lot of problems, so I'm going to leave them alone this time. <laughs> because if you attack one, you tend to have about three or four more attack, and I think there's about seven or so in there in total, and it's a bit ridiculous to fight. Alright, so, okay, so we've explored. Um, is there anything hidden around here? I want to try and be as completely, like, intensive, far up with this run as possible, so we can actually get everything out of this. I mean, not that the game is lacking at all, the game is bloody gorgeous. And here's another cutscene, so let's shut up. <laughs> what seems to be the ruckus? Oh my. Your face. The face of the curse. It's an undead. An undead has come to play. <laughs> they all end up here. All the ones like you. You spoke to that kind old dear, didn't you? <laughs> You're finished. You'll go hollow. Yes, you'll become one of them. Hollows prey upon men. Feast upon their souls. This is the fate of the cursed. <laughs> What is your name? an effigy of you. Now here's where we create our class. So let's go have a look through the class, shall we? We've got the normal warrior, battle scarred warrior, high strength, dexterity, skilled with weapons, uh, traveling knight, high HP adaptability, tough to take down. The swordsman, one of the classes that I rolled on my first time. Uh, finely skilled swordsman, fights gracefully with both weapon strong weapons in both hands. The bandit, hand axe, a merciless at, um, outlaw, high dexterity, skilled with bows, fights well at various ranges. A cleric, cleric on the pilgrimage, high faith, miracles guide the way. Sorcerer, knowledgeable sorcerer, high sorceries with high intelligence and attunement. An explorer, well-traveled explorer, not terribly powerful but has many items. And a deprived, as normal, the unclothed origin unknown has nothing to fight with except life-affirming flesh. Now, what 
what sort of class we're going to go for. I went with a swordsman on my first sort of run, which was not recorded, was me just basically checking out the game, because it's sort of the dex build. But I decided I wanted to change up the thing, because last time we played as the dex character. So this time we're going to be playing as a sorcerer. Now looking at the gear, you can see in the top, in the right hand side there, everyone has sort of different stuff, like the bandit has a bow and some arrows and a hand axe. The swordsman actually starts with one plus weapons, which is quite cool. Um, both his sword, his short sword and his scimitar are both one plus. I'm not sure about anyone else. He has a shield. But we're going to go sorcerer. Also the explorer has that. I don't, don't know what that ring is, but that... That's a good few items in there. Um, I know that the big box thing is some sort of thing that you pay for in your first merchant, which is 3,000. Which is quite a cool, actually, thing to start with. I didn't really notice that at the start. I'm going to go with a sorcerer. For a class, um, well, that's the tiny beings ring. The human effigy is basically humanity in this game. Uh, healing wares is a lot of healing items. Homeward bone is a homeward bone. Seed. Seed of Tree of Giants. I don't actually know what that's for. Bonfire Aesthetic. Uh, from what I'm aware, you throw them into a bonfire and it makes monsters harder. Kind of something that I'm not going to do. Petrified something. A small, simple petrified lump that may be of use someday. Uh, I'm pretty sure that might just be like the token sort of thing that um, from software for in the games, like the amulet and stuff. So I'm going to avoid that. We're going to go with healing wares because that normally works quite well for me. So here we are with our sorcerer. I think they look quite cool. I've got a little tablet on my face. All people come here for the same reason. To break the curse. You're no different, I should think. Hmm, doesn't stand a chance. Well, you never know. <laughs> To the kingdom. But remember, hold on to your souls. They're all that keep you from going hollow. Oh, I'll fool you no longer. You lose your souls. All of them. Over and over again. <laughs> Alright, so there we go. We've got all of the pre-order gear. There we go, that's all the pre-order gear. Now, I just gotta say, I absolutely you adore. Must... Well, I suppose, but if you're willing to start again. I absolutely adore that starting. It's, it's quite funny because it's basically. I just kind of see it as the game developers are kind of just like, ha, yeah, try and try and preserve your souls. You, you, no, no, if you're not going to preserve your souls, you're going to die quite a lot. Because they have really upped the game in this. Right, let's sort of see what we've sort of got for our starting gear. Okay, alright, we've got our Sorcerer's Staff. Now, is the DRC's one better? No, actually, it isn't. Also, it requires a lot more faith than we have. Whoa, that's quite powerful looking. Alright, we're going to have to get on a shield. Uh, okay, we cannot equip a shield. <laughs> okay, let's take that dagger, put it in us offhand. Okay, so we cannot equip anything from the DLC. That's something, if, you, if you're sort of you know looking to equip yourself in DLC gear straight off the game, that you're not probably going to want to roll a sorcerer because it doesn't seem that you can equip yourself straight off the bat with the DLC stuff. Let's also throw on a hat. We don't have a hat on. We need some gloves. There we go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Look, pretty freaking cool sorcerer guy. Alright, now behind here is our first torch. Now, I'm not sure how to use a torch. And I love that new animation that they got for the vampire. It's just so bad. So friggin' badass. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how to use a torch yet. I haven't found out how to light one. All I'm, all I know is that number down there, the the one here, 
that's how much longer you've got on your torches. Your torches have a specific time limit on them. But I haven't actually found out how the house to actually use a torch yet. Which is kind of irritating. I'm going to have to look that up, really. Alright, so let's get going. I know something that I was really curious about last time, and it kind of got me killed, but we're going to go back a little bit. We're going to go back on ourselves. Now, up here, there is a ogre thing, which I'm guessing is kind of an optional thing. No, there's nothing off the edge. Okay, so there's a little ogre guy up here. Now, this guy, I'm guessing, might be optional. Probably is optional, because he's not kind of blocking the way. But I kind of want to see how we can do against him with a sorcerer. I mean, I was a um, swordsman last time, I got quite low, and that seemed to do well. If we can keep our distance from him, that's probably going to be our best bet. Because he is extremely powerful. And if we can kind of just blast him a lot with spells and keep all the distance ever, that would be fantastic. Come on. Are you going to keep coming? Yep, you'll keep coming. Okay, all right. We're kind of going to want us to save him, because I'm really curious about if he drops anything. Because these guys are all littered all over the tutorial zone. Like, there's just tons of them, so I don't know whether or not they're just like, just kind of there to sort of test you, or if there's actually a reason for killing them. That's a thousand souls. Stone ring as well. Let's have a look what that ring does, shall we? Stone ring. Additional reduction of enemy poise. The bluff ring of the gallant shieldless Lothian, formerly of Ferosa. Hits greatly reduce enemy poise. The effect may be trivial, but for those who can comprehend how critical it is to exploit the, a hole in an enemy's defence, it's significant this ring will be clear. That's that's actually great, actually. I mean, if we can sort of have a ring that can break enemy poise quite well, that could be cool, because in this game, um, you can't block indefinitely. If you get guard broken, you can sort of bring out a massively awesome critical attack. Oh, some gold pine resin as well. That's what he was blocking. So actually that was not too bad at all. That's actually a really good reason to fight him. Now I'm pretty sure there's nothing else up here, because I looked around up here before and there's nothing else. Something I would want to note as well, um, in this game you cannot roll across gaps. If you roll, you will pretty much instantly fall to your death. You have to run and you have to jump. But it's so much more responsive. Right, we're going to rest to bring up back our soul. Bring back our arrows. Because we're going to need them quite a lot. Now, of course, this zone is pretty much just the um, tutorial zone. Uh, basically, this place is sort of along the same lines as the prison. Except you can skip it if you really want to. You can literally just walk straight through and leave. But there's a good few items in this place, so we're going to go run straight through it and... Just sort of give it pity that it's actually here. Wow! I'm liking a sorceress so far. I like that I can keep this range. This is doing me great favours here. I'm actually adoring this range. Um, I think I may have found a new favourite class. I, I, in Dark Souls, I kind of, you know, dismissed the usefulness of a sorcerer, but I don't know. Could be something useful here. I mean, from what, I, from what I'm aware, basically people have said that every class is viable. There is not a class which is outweighs, greatly outdoes another. Oh, there's a guy there. Now, I don't know if you can do a sneak attack on a person. I'm pretty sure you cannot sneak attack with a catalyst. So, we're going to go for... I love the new criticals that they got, the new back attacks. Like, it's just so brutal. Oh, there's a, there's a person with a mace. And there's another ogre down there that we're probably going to go fight as well. Alright, let's put our dagger back on our offhand slot. Because we're not going to want to keep running back to bonfires and stuff to keep restoring our mana, um, our spells. We're going to try and want to get out of this place ASAP. That's the second dagger. That's the second dagger, so that's a new offhand. There we go. There we go. So we don't have to keep switching anymore. This guy has a bow. I love that casting speed. That is so fast. I'm pretty sure people are going to complain about something like that. They're going to probably like, oh, OP, nerf. Nerf the casting speed, but oh my god, this is such a viable build. I mean, straight off the bat, this is actually really 
good. This is a really good, useful way of playing. Right, we're going to have to just bring him out here, because I don't want to keep using too many arrows. And I want to kind of... There we go. Bring him out here and fight him. Now, I'm pretty sure there's another bait in here. Oh, that's close. Alright, we're doing pretty damn well, actually. I remember when I played through here as a swordsman, I was not doing nearly this well. Um, also, you may have noticed we have life gems instead. Um, if you're not aware, basically in this game, the Estus Flask is not an Estus Flask anymore. There is an Estus Flask, but you get life gems instead as well. The life gems are kind of... Oh, there's a bird's nest. Snuggly! There's Snuggly around. You, you, give us more. Yes, you, give us Snuggly! I didn't notice that last time. Snuggly's, Snuggly's here. Um, I'm... Pretty sure I don't have anything smooth or silky. Um, I have a feeling I know what they might be referring to. There is a, there's a new item in the game: light sconces with tor with a torch. If I could get out my torch, I would. But I can't. But I'm pretty sure I know what they're referring to. There's a new item called a silky smooth stone, which restores HP. It's pretty damn awesome. Um, I s I've only found one so far, so I'm guessing they might be a bit rare. I wonder if if we du dual hand off, will that do more damage? No, okay. So we're learning. We're learning. If we dual wield, that's not going to do more damage. All right. Dodge, stab, and pyromance. Not pyromance. Oh, I'm loving this dagger on the off hand, actually. I mean, on my swordsman, I kind of immediately switched to sword and shield, but this dagger on the off hand is so bloody quick to sort of get in there, you don't have to kind of worry about that. Right, here's our first time of jumping in Dark Souls 2 uh, on this character. Ooh, that was close. I was starting to fall there, I think, but I probably I think I got the jump just in time. Now, another thing that they kind of brought back, which was kind of taken out... It was in De Demon Souls, but it wasn't in Dark Souls. Um, the They had uh, these old embers, I think it was called, the, where they would restore your mana, because in Demon Souls you had mana. Um, you didn't have... Uh, you didn't have cats, certain number of cats, you had a certain number of mana, and you could restore those with items. Now in this game they brought back that amber thing that I just picked up, is effectively that. You can use that to restore your casts away from bonfires, which I think is pretty cool. Alright, I wonder if we can get a plunging attack. There we go, got a plunging attack on the guy. Okay, right, there we go. That wasn't so well done um, on my behalf, but, you know, we minimise damage by doing a plunging attack. I'm not sure if it's still in the game, but basically, I remember in Dark Souls 1, if you plunging attacked when you fell, you did less damage to yourself. So we're going to kind of pretty much go for a complete completionist of this area. And that was a crack, crack red eye orb. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of liking the fact that they actually gave you cracked red eye orb. Well, at least one this early in the game. I'm not much of a PvPer, but I do like the idea that, you know, if you really want to PvP, there you go. It's sort of given to you straight off the option, straight out the bat. Now, I, 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 okay, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna learn after, after recording this, I'm gonna have to learn how to light a torch, because it's gonna be very useful later in the game. Now, over there is our exit, and here is our last part of the tutorial area. And I know you're probably wanting me to get out of the tutorial area to stop, just, you know, get on with the game and all that sort of stuff, but I I really want to show off as much of this game as possible in this entire playthrough. It's not going to be a fast run. It's not going to be a screamy run or anything like that. It's just going to be very much in-depth, very trying to get the most out of the run and show off everything possible. There's a guy down there. Now, I think I remember doing this. I think I remember I jumped down there to, like, fight that guy or something, and then got ambushed. So I'm going to try and fight, spell him. Ow, son of a... There we go, we got him, right. Okay, I remember last time I jumped down, he caused me quite a long of problems, so we're going to sign... We're going to kind of, like, play it a little bit safer. There we go. Wow, that was a lot of damage. 
So the full damage um, is pretty damn high, I gotta admit. We've got also a little, there's a little buff in the corner I just noticed where it's got a like, little sword with an up. I'm not sure what that is, it might be like a damage up or something. That would probably make sense to be honest. Alright, we've only got eight soul arrows left, now that's not going to be good. But it is kind of good in a certain respect actually, I can show off the amber. Oh! Holy hell, didn't notice you there. All right. Okay, let's fight this guy without using our sorceries. Okay, there we go. See, dual wielding is actually very viable in this game, which is something that comes to no end of praise to myself. I adore dual wielding. Any game that allows me to dual wield, I will dual wield. Just because it's so friggin' cool looking. You look like such a badass. Now, Here's our inventory, the human effigy that we got from the start. Now, I don't know about this, um, if someone has played the game before, they can kind of tell me what that does. What it is. Uh, you will be punished for fleeing from other worlds by disconnecting unjustly. However, this charm will disperse the error directed at you. But sins are not easily burdened. Buried. Buried. And there's no telling if you'll be led off so easily the next time. Each encounter is life is a precious turn of fate, and fate cannot be cheated. I'm pretty sure maybe that's something to like sort of get rid of invaders or something. I don't not really sure. The black separation of crystal of course causes what it usually is. And there's that amber herb, slightly restores spell uses. Now I've never had spells. So I wanna kinda of see how much it does. I mean we had eight and it's Jesus, that's a lot of that's actually quite useful. Now I know behind here is a ogre troll monster, whatever you'd want to call these guys. There we go. We'll get him up. And kind of Get fighting on him. Oh crap, that's pretty close. Oh crap. Okay, where are we? Where are we? We are. Jeez! <laughs> okay, so that was lucky. That was really, really, really lucky. We've got to get out of here. We can't fight them. We're not going to fight them like this sort of close range. We're going to have to kind of just do what we did last time and cheat him a little bit. Sorry guys, this is this is a mobile breakfast. <laughs> okay, I know I said this wasn't going to be very screamy or whatever, but bloody hell these things are tense. Oh my god, they can cross that! Okay, I didn't know they could cross that. Okay, that was a bit scary. Not gonna lie, that was really, really scary actually. I was completely unaware that they were able to cross that jump. Okay, we've only got four arrows, soul arrows left. Can we take him down in four soul arrows? Well, I'm guessing we're gonna find out. It's one. That's two, that's three, that's not going to kill him. Alright, we're going to have to use more amber. I want these guys dead because I kind of want to see what's in that box. Okay, right. Yep, we've got nothing. And, okay, another cool, cool kind of cool thing in this game is you can move while using items. Which is very, very, very useful, especially if you're using the menu. But, of course, when you pick up items in this game, it doesn't automatically equip them to your item bar, which is... I don't know. Uh, I don't really like it too much, honestly. Because I am not the sort of person to keep an eye on my item bar! <laughs> and I kind of liked the whole, you know, up to five items would be automatically stored straight on your item bar. Alright, that's him down. Okay, so let's kind of, let's go see what was in that coffin. I mean, we've just earned our way over here, we've just killed two of those guys. Pretty cheeky way of killing them, I, I would say. Uh, ridiculously cheeky. Especially if we survived that drop, that was... What the hell's... <laughs> oh my god. Examine. What? Oh, crap. Okay, um... What? The nature of your being has changed. 
I, I don't understand what that means. Sorcerer. Convent. Sin level. Um. Let's just have a quick look. Performance. Poise. Required souls to level up. Level endurance. No, 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 no. I'm really confused. I don't know what they did, honestly. Um, that's strange. I'm really not sure what they've done apart from respawn enemies, actually. I respawned him, um, although I have genuinely no idea what the bloody hell that actually just did. Um, it changed my nature. That's something I'm going to have to look up as well. Because I'm not sure if I want my nature changed. Right, so we've completed the tutorial. I know it's a bit long and that, but I just wanted to be very far with the area and I want to really show off the sort of new stuff. And look at all these messages! Look at all these messages! I hate people. I'm, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna one day stop that. Nope. Okay, so uh, one, day I'm, one day I'm gonna just kind of learn that no one ever uses the messaging system nicely. They will always say, illusion ahead or whatever. And all of that was worth it. All of that tutorial was worth it. Look at this place. <sighs> it's... My god, it is beautiful. So on that note, we're gonna go rest at Manjula. Damn, this place is nice. Right, we're going to explore the, here on another episode. We're going to have to cut it for today, because I'm pretty sure we have went on for it. Really, really long now. We're going to go over to the bonfire. This is a bonfire, this is a banjul. This is kind of, from what I'm aware, this is basically the hub of the game. We're going to rest at this bonfire, and we'll call it a day for day. Just for now, but... Look at this place. Just look at it. Now you can see why I spent four hours last night playing this game couldn't properly sleep because of it. Jesus. So, thank you for joining me. I've been the OG Nerd. Until next time, share love to your slate faces, praise the sun, and ta -ra!